Well, hello folks, this is Jim Rism, and we are going to check the balance, the, the audio balance of a potentiometer. Uh, and we're not going to listen the result to this. We're going to use simple measuring instruments to make sure that these two left and right stereo channels are balanced before we install this potentiometer inside our audio project. And of course, you should always listen to the potentiometer. Uh, different people are different sensitive, but we want to make sure that it's decently balanced before even <laughs> attempting to installing it. Some, some are not, and some are, uh, because this is an analog item. These channels, the two channels, will never be exactly the same balance. There will always be a slight imbalance due to construction, uh, conductivity, the thickness of the uh, coal things inside of here, uh, stuff like that that affects conductivity and stuff like that. So a stereo potentiometer will never be 100% completely balanced at uh, across the entire scale. There will always be some diffs. However, usually that diff is kind of small, but I don't know, some of the time, um, especially like not good quality potentiometers like this, can actually be, uh, you know, you actually might need to buy several and just select the one that's balanced if you don't want to have an extra one of these uh, connected up. By the way, um, if you would want to have a balancing potentiometer, you could of course uh, connect up the stereo and right channels on like uh, different ends and then like the grounds in between the middle and you could basically use this to um, adjust um, the balance of the audio so that when you ride to the other side, it gets more to the other, da, 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 and you can find the perfect balance. So you can have an additional potentiometer for this. However, this is a logarithmic A potentiometer that's made for audio. And that's, of course, not suitable for this job, because uh, if you would like to use a stereo, stereo potentiometer to balance the two audio channels, uh, so you can balance them in the middle, well, then you, of course, should have a linear, a B potentiometer. This is an A audio potentiometer, and due to the logarithmic scale, if we wire this up this way, it would be very hard to find the exact middle balance. So you really want a linear one if you want to find all new balance. But you can wire a stereo linear potentiometer up uh, in order to balance the audio out. So that's just a little quick tip. Now we're going to measure this logarithmic A potentiometer. We can say it says 20, uh, 50k AX2. So stereo channel logarithmic potentiometer. We're going to measure the channels here. To do that, we have a little friend here, a measuring instrument. And right here, we can find the measurements for the ohm, which we are, of course, going to use. So I have uh, set it to the setting here, so we can measure the ohms here. And we test the other channel here. And the needle should actually, of course, stop at the same place. We can test it the other way around. So we can find a new spot. So we test this channel here. Select another channel there. You can see it's, it's very equal. And we'll do another measurement. So we're gonna try and find the lower side of the spectra here so we can really see some sensitivities. So one channel there and the other one there. So here you can see we have a slight imbalance. However, I don't think this is enough to actually uh, cause an audible problem. Uh, so you will of course connect it up to your audio and listen to it. Uh, but if you think that the needle stops at all sorts of different places over the different ranges, that none of them match up exactly, 
then the audio potentiometer is likely to not be suitable to use in an audio equipment. And of course, do always test it so you can hear when listening to it if that is the case. Uh, but if it is unbalanced, you probably want to install another pot that actually uh, is balanced because otherwise you might be annoyed that the audio isn't balanced between left and right and you might need to get a stereo linear one just to balance the channels out all the time, which is a good solution, but you know, can be a little bit boring in the end. In any case, hope that helped. If it did, do leave a like, check out some of my other wiring tutorials, and I'll see you in future videos. This is your host, Jim Desen. We're signing out.